the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. So one day, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus went into the temple to pray. He too needed time to be with God. And what did he find there in the temple? Absolute chaos. People selling things, trying to make a profit out of others. But this was a special place. This was a place of worship, a house of prayer. What do we think of Jesus normally? Do we think of him as a meek and mild character? Or at least that's often how some of the old Victorian hymns would portray him. How do we see Jesus? Gentle Jesus, meek and mild? Loving Jesus, gentle lamb? Or are there other images that we have of Jesus? We often see images of Jesus carrying a sheep, gentle, quiet, calm, peaceful, placid, wouldn't hurt a fly, suddenly we are confronted with something else, as Jesus was confronted with that sight in the temple. The injustice, the injustice of that scene in the house of God, in the temple courtyard, cattle and sheep dealers, people selling doves and money changers all gathered together trying to make some profit, trying to do their very best. What upset Jesus though was the, the bizarreness, the mismatch between what they were doing and where they were, that place of worship, that central house of prayer, a place to worship God, but in fact a place where they took advantage of others. This was a place of worship. This was the house of God. This was a centre of devotion where Jesus must have spent hours and hours and hours deep in prayer sitting at the feet of the rabbis when he was younger, listening and learning about the Bible and about the Jewish religion. This was an important place. This was indeed a holy place. And this holy ground was being spoilt just because the people there in that building wanted to make a profit. They were being greedy. They were being selfish. They were selling animals, which was a common thing to do then, to sell the animals for sacrifice that people would make and then make a profit out of it. That sounds bad enough in itself, but even worse, 
they brought these animals into the temple courtyard. Not on the outside, not on the local hillside round about, but inside that place of worship itself. The place of worship had become a place of profit. It sounds more like a, a trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange than the outer courts of the Temple of God. No wonder that Jesus himself was so angry. There is a time and a place, that's for sure. But certainly the temple was not the place for this kind of activity. By driving the merchants out of the temple precincts, he symbolically cleansed it of its superficial, greedy practices. Why was Jesus so angry? What was happening was just plain wrong. The greed, the materialism was just overwhelming. So understandably, he lost his temper, and who can blame him? It's not very often that we see Jesus so angry in the Bible, but he was certainly hang angry here. You don't expect it. We live in a world where there is greed and selfishness. We live in a society where so often people look after themselves, perhaps ignore the needs of others. Just like the merchants in the temple, whose main aim was to make a profit. So today there are groups, there are individuals as well, who only make as much as they can without really thinking about the needs of others. Jesus didn't like it, and we too should take a stand, a stand against injustice and greed. Marcus Rashford is one such shining example of somebody working for justice. Not only a young, gifted football player, but a great worker, a great ambassador for justice, for the rights of those who are poor, a mouthpiece for those who appear to have no voice. Something as simple as that call for free school meals during the summer holidays. Certainly in the light of the recent pandemic and the continuing situation, where there is so much financial hardship for so many people, he made a difference, and so can we. How? By praying for those who suffer injustice, by working to make a better world, a fairer world. Fair trade is one such way that we can help combat greed. Something as simple and basic as buying some fair trade tea bags, something like that, it can make a difference. Donating to a food bank, writing to our local MP about the things that bother us, supporting local community groups, or at least about thinking hard and praying even harder about what is really important in our world. We are called to stand for justice, recognising that God is the God of justice. Let us pray. Send down the fire of your justice. Send down the rains of your love. Come, send down the Spirit. Breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Call us to be your compassion. Teach us the song of your love. Give us hearts that sing. Give us deeds that ring. Make us ring with the sound of your love. Call us to witness your kingdom. Give us the presence of Christ. May your holy light keep us shining bright. Ever shine with the presence of Christ. 
Send down the fire of your justice. Send down the rains of your love. Come, send down the Spirit. Breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God.